It's your boy Concert Viz 34, and today I'm gonna to be talking about Ed Sheeran. It's Monday, July 17th, 2017. Ed is in the news for two reasons this morning. First, he had the Game of Thrones season seven premiere cameo, which I saw. It was alright. Other reason he's in the news, he just announced he's canceling about 10,000 tickets for European tour dates that are upcoming. Now, if we look at the history of Ed Sheeran, he did this earlier in the year as well for North American tour dates where he canceled a bunch of tickets that he was able to trace back the people that sold them for well over five or six times the price. In the UK, you're looking at some of these tickets at worst case scenarios were being sold at eight times the price to someone else who paid that money. Um, and that's a lot for the secondary marketplace. Now, canceling out tickets is something that's been going on in the last couple of years. A lot of artists have been taking a stand However, in my opinion, it's not going to end the issues that you see where fans can't get a reasonable ticket price for a band, an act, or whoever they love um, as far as the arts and entertainment. Reason being is some of these ticket brokers, some of these average Joes that just want to buy a ticket to make a quick buck, and everyone in between is not deterred by tickets being canceled out 100%. You have people that are... You know, all right, their tickets get canceled in the first batch and they're finding ways to, to pay someone else to buy them a ticket in the second batch. They're trying to figure out, they talk to a venue, they smooth the venue where Ed's saying, you know what, you buy a ticket in the second wave, you have to go to will call with your ID. Well, that ticket broker may have a relationship with the venue to find a way to get an e-ticket or a hard stock ticket where they don't have to go to will call. Or they'll pick up the ticket the day of the event and then meet whoever they're selling it to for a higher price and then they go into the gate so you're not you're never going to stop a ticket broker 100 percent from trying to find once their tickets get canceled to to go in that second way even pay someone else with their credit card or, or they have other people other associates that will get them tickets the way you're going to stop the ticket prices from being outrageous is you're really going to have to have artists have extended stays or, or many residencies in major cities, especially where there's a higher demand for it. A act like Ed Sheeran or an Adele, and so on. We saw a great example of this with Adele, right? Adele last year had tickets for shows and they sold out everywhere, pretty much. Adele also had a lot of different shows where I think she was doing three or four shows in a city. And what happened was at first, the secondary market price was ridiculous. But because there were a bunch of shows in LA, a bunch of shows in New York, a bunch of shows in Boston, closer to the event, these scalpers or whatever you want to call them, ticket brokers, they had to lower their prices closer to face value. And if you waited until a couple of days before the event, you could get some decent prices for tickets because all these people were stuck with tickets for five days of events they may have gotten. What happened is then they had to sell them at a lower cost and fans who waited won uh, or fans who may have bought uh, resold tickets earlier in the game were like, oh man, that's not fair. I'm screwed out of this. But the point is at some point during the process, there was a decent price for someone to pay if they waited. This can happen with the Ed Sheeran. This can happen with Bruno Mars who, I mean, his tickets are ridiculous on the secondary if they do more shows in major cities like a New York, Boston, Chicago, LA, if they do five or six shows in a city and they just sit there for a week or sit there for a half week, you're going to see ticket prices go down. You're going to see people who are reselling these tickets be forced to put them at two times the price. Yes, some people just don't agree with that, but it's better than it being eight times. So a great example of, of why this will, would work as well is if you look at baseball, I just went to a Yankees Red Sox game yesterday, got a really good price on the ticket. And I think based on what I paid uh, for a ticket uh, in, in the loge box right at the third base line, uh, if I were to buy that ticket as an individual game ticket as a Yankees fan at Fenway, if it was available, even though it's not, it's about the same price I paid for the secondary that I would have paid at the primary. Maybe a little less, maybe a little more. I don't know the exact face value uh, for a single game ticket. But the point being is Yankees-Red Sox, that, that rivalry that I go to every year, 
there's so many games. The Yankees go into Fenway three times a year and vice versa. So you have at least a three-game series once a year. It's a four-game series. You have tons of games. You don't have to worry about, oh, no, I won't be able to go to that game because there's tons of games throughout a year with that rivalry. And if you go in early April, you get a cheaper price. Everyone who, who, who goes to that series knows it's so cold. But, all right, it's 40 degrees. I wear a jacket. I get a nice seat behind the dugout like I did last year, well below face. I got tickets. I think it was like 125 The face value on the tickets was almost 200 bucks to be behind the dugout. So translating that to concerts, if you have more Ed Sheeran shows, if you have a half a week of Bruno Mars shows in New York City or in Vegas, Ticket prices are going to go down. They may not be like Yankees Red Sox because we love concerts more than we love baseball nowadays, let's be honest. And also baseball stadiums are bigger. Uh, but in an arena where there's 15 to 16,000, 17, 18,000 seats, and you do five or six shows, you're going to take care of people being able to either get tickets on the on sale or if they can't get them on the on sale, all five shows sell out in New York or Boston and so on. You can go on the secondary closer to the event and get a nice deal. Or even right after they sell out, a couple months in or a couple weeks in, you may find someone who budges and, and lowers that price. Uh, but the way things are now, certain acts, it's not everyone. You can still get cheap concert tickets uh, to many different artists. But the top of the top and the pop charts, some of the rock stuff, some of the nostalgia acts as far as the old Tom Petty's and, and what you have where people are thinking this may be his last tour. You're gonna have a higher price, but when you do more shows, you get a higher probability that ticket scalpers, brokers, and even, like I said, there's a lot of average Joes that just do this. They buy tickets, they see what these tickets are going for, they think, oh, I can do it, it's easy, and they, they try to do what brokers do and resell these. Uh, but we there has to be more shows and, and more of a fill, fulfillment of demand uh, in some of these instances where certain actors just on a hot streak they're on fire and everyone wants to see them so let the public get what they want and give them more shows let me know what you guys think definitely like comment and subscribe uh, if you've had any experiences with this you know definitely share your stories uh, but i'm out take care